All right, so in this video, we want to study about just three simple things. The first one is a keyword which says read only. The second one is just a question mark, yes, literal question mark. And the third one is a use case scenario that you'll be using a lot with the case of type, not with just ordinary object. This is the most use case scenario. So whenever you'll be looking in the project being designed by other person or GitHub repository, you're trying to understand the code, you'll find these kinds of situations a lot. So scenario based. Let's go ahead and get started. It's pretty easy. Hit that subscribe and then we can move forward. Yeah, this video is powered by AI. Until unless you hit the subscribe, it doesn't move forward. So yeah, you have to. Just kidding, let's get started with that. So the same example, we are into the my objects and let's just go ahead and define a simple user. So we have seen that, I've commented out all the code that we can actually go ahead and use a uh, type and this is a type that can be multi-used into functions or maybe anything else that you're defining. So let's just say there is a name uh, that is going to come up as a simple string type, so name, string. And you also have email that is also a string type and you also have probably is active. So to track that whether user is logging in into three days or maybe whatever the parameter is. So in this case, now a couple of things that you'll be using is in case you are, oops, my bad, sorry. <laughs> okay, so that you'll be using, let's just say you are using MongoDB to save this uh, user into a database. So you want that nobody should actually be able to touch this underscore ID, which is a common thing in MongoDB. So this is a string. Now at the time of creation, obviously you'll be, your MongoDB will be creating that, but you want that nobody should be able to manipulate that further down the road. So you can go ahead and mark this as read only. Yep, that's a keyword. Uh, you can just put it onto any one. And now you won't be able to change that. Uh, so that's a pretty simple one, a really easy one. Now, one thing I would like to mention here, which is crucial, that notice here, this ID is a simple string. So for string, you won't be able to change that for, or let me just give you a walkthrough of that. Let's try to create a simple user for that. Uh, let's just say there is a function which says create a user. And then it says, hey, uh, just give me a user. So when at the time of creating this user, let's just say we call this as you, which is type of a user. And that's basically it. Uh, so nothing big deal. This is a really simple function. Now, whenever there is a U, uh, which is obviously a type of user, you can access all these values up here. Or, you know what, let's not create a function actually. Let's create a variable because it's easier to show you this example with the variable. So let's try with variable. So let's just say we call it as uh, my user, which is going to be of type uh, user, totally fine. And now in order to make sure that this is a user type, we have to actually assign all these values. This is going to complain because it's not able to fulfill all these values. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, let's give it an underscore ID, which should be a type of string. So let's just say this is uh, one, two, three, four, whatever that is. Also, we have to provide a name. Let's just go ahead and say this is H, Mr. H. And then we have email, which can also be h at the rate h.com. I wish I would have that email. And uh, still complaining because one more parameter or one more property needs to be there, which is is active. Let's just say this is not an active user. Okay, false. And uh, what is still your issue? So we have ID, name, email, and a string. Why is it complaining? It says false is not assignable to type. Oh, my bad, should be saying that this is a Boolean. Okay, uh, honest mistake there. All right, so we have gone through with this. Now what we can do is I can just go ahead and say, hey, my user is about to change its email so we can access the email and I can say, hey, now your new email is uh, something like h at the rate gmail.com. You are totally allowed to do so. But in case you want to access something like my user dot uh, underscore ID, you should not be allowed to change that. So you if you just try to sign anything to it, uh, then obviously it will complain that this was marked as read only. You should not be doing this. So this is one of the use case of whenever there is a read-only keyword that is coming up. But maybe you also want to have some of the things like a user has registered by UPI or maybe some credit card details. So obviously we know not every person has credit card. So we are gonna say credit card details. This is going to be a simple number. Now obviously not all the user, ah bad, number, there we go. <laughs> So we obviously know that not all users are going to have credit card details. We also allow some users to come on our website and have free access to the platform. So this could be marked as optional. So all you have to do is come up and put up a question mark here. Now this will not complain. If you pass on that detail, that's great. It will be utilized. Otherwise you can just put a question mark. 
Yes, I do agree. When you first time are learning about the TypeScript, this question mark before the colon is a little bit weird syntax, but over the time it will get over. So this is the really easy use case that we have in the card details and all of that. So you get the idea, this will not allow you to complain. And by the way, a little bit more to surprise you, not surprise you, actually give you more in-depth of the detail. Uh, let me comment this out so that we can successfully actually compile this into TypeScript. So that will give you a lot idea. So TSC, this one is my objects. And if I go ahead and run this, this creates an object file, but I hope you can see that now we are exporting so much. So we are exporting ES module uh, IDs there and all of these details are there. Notice here, there is nothing which is uh, depicting in the JavaScript that, hey, you are allowed to modify this ID or not. But uh, the moment I uncomment this code, now this is giving me an error. Now notice TypeScript will stop me from doing a lot of things. In my object, notice here, uh, there is nothing still. And we, we are working just on the properties or the config file of the TypeScript that will allow me, even in the future, it will allow me to stop producing that code. But there is nothing in the JavaScript which actually stops you that. So this is a pure function or a feature of the TypeScript itself. So just make sure you remember that part. Okay. Now one more thing I would like to mention, since we are talking about the credit cards. <laughs> so this is a scenario we'll build just based on the credit card. So there are something known as, or there is something known as a mix and match of uh, these types. So let's just say we have a type. And first thing that you want to have is a card number. So let's just say you define that, hey, card should have a number. And this is how I'm going to store the number. So you just say, give me a number. Or I'll say, uh, yeah, number is, number is actually a keyword. So let's call this one as a card number, all lowercase, yeah. And this is going to be a string. Uh, it couldn't be anything. And then also you know that if you are storing the card details, the card number alone is not enough. There is card uh, date as well. Let's assume that somebody is storing that date, or I'll call this as card date, just to be sure. That is also being stored in a string format. So there are many cases where you want to simply store this card number, card detail, or card date, but you also realize there is a CVV number. So yes, this is a fictitious scenario I'm making up because there's just one detail, it's easier to explain. But in real world use cases, there is this is too much, a big of a type that you have created. So you save a lot of time. So in that case, you can go ahead and say that, hey, I'm creating a new type. And all you have to do in this type is you can mix and match of the two above. So let's just say we are saying this as card details. So obviously now we have to compile this card details with all the things. So card numbers, expiry date, CVV, all is coming up. I know these two are about defined, so I don't have to redefine the things. I can go ahead and say that, hey, uh, this will be of type uh, being created from the card number. And then I can use an ampersand sign to combine them together. Ampersand is to use all of them together, not just or, like get this one or get that one. And is for combining all the things. So combine card number and also combine card date. And also I want to give one more because we didn't caught up with the CVV. So I'll just put up an end and create an object. Here we'll say that give me a CVV, which will be of type uh, number. So now if I go ahead and create any variable or maybe any object using card details, I have to adhere with all the values up here. So this is really, really easy. And again, right now you're looking at it from the perspective, hey, there's just one value here. There's not a big deal. I could have defined it. But imagine the scenario where project is coming up from a long list of coders. They've already created a couple of types which are doing absolutely great. You just want to utilize them. Yes, I do agree. This object is a little bit overkill, uh, not a good practice at all. Nobody would advise you to do such things on the go. It looks very hacky, uh, but just wanted to make a use case. Uh, this up till here is definitely a use case where you define a new type based on the combination of previous two type. So remember, both examples are here. The first one is a good example. The first two where you use existing types which defines another third type uh, by using the existing functionality. There is also a hacky way of doing the things, which is not a good practice, but still we can do it if we want to. So that's it, a really simple way of handling the situations up here and nothing much of a big deal. So now you know a little bit more about the TypeScript than you know before starting the video. So for that, hit that subscribe button and let's catch up in the next video.